Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today's video, we're going to be looking at build diversity. And um, I guess that's probably kind of an arbitrary term because it is quite subjective and every player, you know, will define it differently. And then the way the division is also structured, we have PVP and PVE. So what I'll try to do in this, um, you know, video is I'm just going to go into three different categories to make things slightly simple. I'll go with gun damage, I'll go with uh, skills, and then I'll go with like support. I don't even know if that even makes any sense. Maybe if you did DPS, tank, healer, that would probably make sense, but we have a lot more in the division than those three. So when I say skills, the skills could be DPS, the skills could be healer, the skills could be all kinds of stuff, and then support could also be done with the skills, if you understand what I mean. So division has a weird way to look at it. Now. What I've really noticed along the lines of many people saying that there is no build diversity in this game is that many of the people that say that usually preface it with in PVP, what you have is the same old, same old stuff going around. So what I did was I slapped together kind of that, you know, build that you can, you know, run in PVP. You know, you carry, you take your, uh, you know, your uh, what they call it, um, Providence. You know, you put your glass cannon on there with the sacrifice chest piece. If you can get the hollow mask, and if you can get your fox prayer and your contractor's gloves, your golden. If you want, if you really want to be more salty in the dark zone, you can just go ahead and throw your pestilence and slap on four true patriots and make yourself tanky. And according to a YouTuber that was well, not a YouTuber only, but a content creator saying pestilence would do all the work for you. So this is where I think PVP falls short many times because everybody in PVP is looking for the best possible way to take down their opponent in the fastest possible way. And so this has become what we call meta in the PVP side of things. In fact, one crazy example is this Baker's Dozen Rifle. This Baker's Dozen Rifle, according to my build, which is not necessarily maxed out for rifle builds, is doing 473,000 damage at 180,080 uh, RPM. Now, if I come to the support, uh, the crafting bench, and I go through all my rifles, what you're going to notice is none of the rifles that I can craft actually comes close to the 50% mark of the amount of damage that this weapon can do so i'll probably have to go find other rifles and even with that some other rifles are still very stubborn and can't come even close to this the one that's getting close in my opinion right now is the m1a cqb at 269,000 compared to the 400 plus thousand i think there's another uh rifle that also comes very high i can't remember the name uh, off the top of my head that can do some really decent damage i think it's one of the new ones that they added but still that's not even you know close for anybody to be able to put down this weapon right now and then people can go for another one now in pve this is where the gun meta lies because this one has a slow rpm but it does a lot of damage and so in the gun aspect of things the build diversity is very lean there isn't enough different ways to play in regard to your guns but that doesn't mean there aren't different ways to play with your guns that are powerful i think many are just very interested in this amount of damage and they forget a lot of the fun stuff that actually comes with the game that can do equally good damage and it's not always necessarily damage per enemy some really good builds other than just true patriot include ongoing directive which is actually very good for shotgun builds that you can run in pve Another one is Negotiator's Dilemma, which is very good for, you know, spreading damage across the board. And these two gear sets have actually proven to work very well with weapon based builds. So I can pinpoint three basic ones and you can go all kinds of crazy with sniper and marksman rifle builds. And you can probably come out with about five, you know, basic builds in the weapon side. But most likely about three of them will be on the PVE side and then only two will be on PVP. This is where PVP sometimes gets, you know, into a twist. And when people say there's no build diversity, I think they have to always say there's no, there's not really a lot of build diversity in PVP. But then when you come to the skills and the skill support side, that's where this game unlocks. And this is Tom Clancy's The Division. This is what makes The Division very, very unique. 
uh, in regard to what it is, an RPG game and very unique from other looter shooters. There's a comment that somebody placed on this channel when I was talking about some things about The Division and the person mentioned to me that they are an avid Destiny and Warframe player, hardcore. And they said that there are a few things that Destiny brings to the table and Warframe brings to the table in regard to how your builds are. Perhaps in Destiny, he said, this person actually said that you can actually have all the items that everybody has to basically almost the same level. And in Warframe, if your gear is at a point, I think he explained in a place where you would do very well, but he said min-maxing and variety, the division actually wins. This is coming from a player who has played both of them, and they they've told me that. You know, you can actually gain so much more uh, to do in regard to the multitude of systems that are present in this game. I counted the amount of skills that we have, and I stopped somewhere around 31 in regard to variations and different skills. And the way that you can actually make builds around this, these different variations and these different, uh, you know, skill proxies is actually crazy good and provides a lot more options for players to be able to use. If you go and look at just the chem launcher by itself, there is diversity in the way this can work. You can use it as a healer, so you can go heal, uh, build. You can use it as a as a fire starter. Um, just whatever it is you want to do with it, you can use it as maybe if you're working on a DPS build, this skill can support you. You can use the riot foam. If you have a lot of skill power to be able to proc good riot foam, uh, you know you can get your enemies stuck in that while other teams burst that down, that will be skill support. You can use the chem launcher, that will be skills damage, and that's just one skill by itself. You go into the hive, you can build hive for healing. If you wanna be a healer, you can build for a stinger. If you wanna bleed, you can do many things with it as well. These are some of the things that make the skills very unique. You go into the shield, the shield will take you all kinds of places. You can run DPS with it, you can run tank with it. I mean, I'm I'm listing these and you're looking and saying you can build around the secret mine explosive damage. You can build around your drones, whatever it is you want to use them for. It doesn't seem like there's too much, but many people use their bombardier drones um, to be able to do some good work. And then, you know, you look around, you see the turret, which is also another aspect people build around with the artillery turret as one of the favorites and the sniper tur turret. In my opinion, I think the sniper turret is the second favorite for a lot of people or some people's, you know, number one favorite and they can do crowd control with the flame turret if they wanted to right now not a lot of people are using that because it doesn't have too much damage potential depending on the build you're running but if you're running a good status effect build definitely something that you can use so all in all from the skills we can extract like probably 10 major kinds of builds from there if you say okay what are the best possible options but then you also have to look at the final aspect which is player preference so in the world of the skills, there's so much diversity that if somebody says there is no build diversity in the game, it is at this point, basically, um, you know, something that we have to say, what play style do you have? If your play style does not want to go into the skills, then the person is going to struggle and say there really isn't any build diversity. And even in PvP, many people still leverage most of these skills on their groups. So they go to they go into a fight, they have a healer in the fight that you know, or they have whatever it is. I don't know what they do on PvP these days. Back in Division One, a healer actually made sense in PvP. I don't know if that's actually worthwhile right now in the PvP in the game. And that's you know that's another problem too with time to kill the systems that are currently in the game and the way the developers seem to be strong arming everything in the game right now they don't want things to get too strong when in reality they need to make more things stronger so that they are more viable within the game but they have promised that they're going to make a lot more things viable they said that they were playing with a punch drunk mask and they said they wanted to actually grant the the mask uh, a 30 percent headshot damage um you know bonus or something like that but to be very honest that's probably not going to help much with the pvp side of the weapon damage instead it's going to help the pve gain more diversity if we get 30 percent headshot damage on uh, uh you know on a pistol or on a pistol based brand set you know we tanks are going to love it and i'm saying yeah bring it because i would love to get you know an extra 20 percent headshot damage on this build because i'm i like to play the tank i like to play the tank with the bulwark shield so it's in my opinion it doesn't seem like it's really going to benefit the area where the build diversity is needed 
but the developers need to start thinking of how these builds can actually come into play that is the hard way to go and i think everybody is seeing it now because the developers have nerfed and nerfed and nerfed and they've come to this point where it's like what more can we nerf without actually making the game useless and i think that question is now they're getting to the point where they're doing what i've said months and months ago in my videos they need to buff other things and many people have been saying it too that these these other aspects of the game that are very very poor underperforming need to be buffed up and at the same time if you buff them what's going to happen in pvp and then this is the other part where you have to say you have to make sure that when you're actually scaling these things you're scaling them in the pvp side of things because we do have pvp stats that's one thing about our you know our game is you know you have your stats and how they actually show up in pvp and so that's definitely something that the developers ought to look at when they're making these changes they make a change that change is pvp specific then they need to nuke that number or adjust that number on the pvp side of things to take it into the pve like people are complaining right now of true patriot which is crazy because nobody talked about true patriot remember the very first damage build paradigm that went around the meta was something that looked like this and all the pve players were enjoying true patriot and then once it made its way into pvp ooh, it became too strong it was it was not strong when i made my heroic true patriot build in the beginning of this warlords of new york patch it wasn't until everything came into play that we started hearing this i'm not saying that anybody you know it's anybody's fault i'm just saying these are the problems that developers are going to continue to face if they do not separate pvp and pve and tweak those stats in you know independently from one another so on the question of build diversity it's very complex I think there is build diversity in the game. This is just a surface discussion. I guarantee you, if you look away from your weapon damage builds, you will find a lot of other viable builds that work. If you want to be Rambo, then you're going to be in a box. That's just the way the division is. I, I can say from multiple patches from the division one all the way to the division, you know, to the division two right now. If you're going to play gun damage builds, they're going to be very specific. Either you're going to they're, you're going to move into the areas of like classifieds or like we'd had in the division one where one specific, you know, gear set was geared towards a specific weapon or you're going to have to just take, you know, the very best possible damage dealing builds with your weapons, which right now it's crit chance, crit damage. You maybe you throw a tank build in there and just raw weapon damage or damage over time. There really isn't there really are many options to go right now in the mainstream. But then another side that I have to mention before I end this video is there might also be a lot of other builds that are out there that people are capable of, you know, that people have been using but are not sharing and not talking about. Because usually what happens is when somebody puts out a video and says this is the best build in this category, everybody follows that everybody follows that um, you know, that track leaving open a lot of other tracks for people to be you know to be able to explore but then when somebody finds a very good build guess what they don't they're not youtubers they're usually the gamers that play the game and then they just quietly keep using their very strong build over patches they never get nerfed never get touched and so who can say that there is no weapon diversity in there's no build diversity in a weapon class we haven't seen every single weapon build in the game we have a general idea but until we can say okay we've seen enough then we can come to that conclusion for the large part. Anyways, that's just pretty much my little spew. Let me hear what you guys think in the comment section. I appreciate your time and audience, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.